I would much rather have my eyes gouged out than interact with you for even a few more seconds of my short life. Lovey Bunny. To those who came across this post, you may be asking yourself, what are you talking about? That's a crazy way to start off your piece. That's because you don't know what you're in for just yet. Fuck Lovey Bunny. I hate her with such a burning passion that it eats away at me now. She's the sole reason I left the Nick Jr. fandom. The reason I have extreme trust issues with people now. The reason people in my circle of peers feel like pounding their desks whenever they simply think of a pink rabbit. And she had the gall to come back to us under another alt begging for our approval last night. I'm not having it. I didn't think I had to make this, considering that her apology was horrible enough for people to not trust her anymore. But since she still won't leave us alone, I'll have to rub her nose in it. We met Lovey Bunny in a small Google Plus community a few years back. Her account wasn't very well known at the time, due to YouTube basically forcing people to get one after obtaining a YouTube channel. She already wasn't fun to be around, but we stuck around because we thought she simply had bad social skills. She was, admittedly, a pretty good artist. Most of the time, drawing this pink bunny character meant to personify her. We were all over Nick Jr. stuff, especially Lovey, who styled her rabbit character after one of the bumpers from the programming block. Eventually, we started to notice how off the rails she was becoming. For starters, she'd yell at someone if they dared to make a joke she didn't understand, or if they talked over her by accident for just a small moment. She occasionally posted gore of her character if she felt ever so slightly stressed about simple situations. But for some reason, we didn't catch on yet. Likely because she also branched out to make Nickelodeon horror content. Her YouTube showed plenty of video pastas, as they're called now, that were shittily edited and cliched in their premises, like SpongeBob's suicide to give an example. Despite the fact she incorporated that wavy, staticky effect on every single video pasta she made, they had some decent artwork done. That wasn't all she did, though. And looking back on her channel, half of it was pretty exploitative. She also did certain comic dubs. Some featured her persona flirting or in seemingly uncomfortable situations with Nick Jr. characters. I do recall one of them featuring Blue from Blue's Clues in a barely anthropomorphic style, having to solve a pink-colored clue without Steve in the house, eventually leading to her making out with Lovey Bunny's OC. My friend group consisted of minors at the time. One of them being me, may I remind you, and most of us were viewers of her channel. She was 25. How do I know this? Let me fucking tell you. A video was posted on her channel at 1 in the morning, titled 
taken over by Tegan and was removed the following day. Obviously because Lovey Bunny didn't want to get caught. But it was already too late. We all saw the quivering reality of how she truly acted behind her monitor. Tegan is Lovey Bunny's sister. The video was a screen recording from a phone, and she explained that the questionable content her sibling had posted, featuring characters and suggestive scenarios, were actually visual representations of what Lovey Bunny had done to her during her childhood. The sickening words of affirmation. How touchy her OC got with others in her dubs is what she imagined herself doing to her kin. She told us everything about how horrible her childhood was just being in the same room as her, and how her parents never believed it, often coming up with excuses for her pleas because she needed someone to look up to Excuses like, it's okay for your sister to love you, and she just wants you to play with her. <laughs> Bunch of enablers. Lovey Bunny's phone was skimmed through out of curiosity by her sister. And honestly, if it weren't for Tegan snooping, one of us could have possibly been dragged into her depraved facade. Discord messages, Discord messages, Discord messages. So many Discord messages of her on an alternate account, talking to a child as young as 11, and manipulating him into doing absolutely deviant favors, such as drawing sensual fan art of her OC or begging him to join her roleplay. The video ended with Tegan imploring us to donate as soon as possible to the PayPal link in the description so she can leave. And that the police don't work because she's really good at putting on a show. Nothing was censored. We saw all of it. And we were livid. Lovey Bunny's comment sections on her most recent or popular videos were flooded with users calling her a piece of shit, telling her to put a bullet in her skull. Honestly, I don't blame them. She disappeared from our group and went silent for several days, keeping quiet probably thinking that it will all go away. But the comments kept rolling in. And she went from 2,000 subs to over 900 shortly after the upload. A deserved downfall, perfectly balanced, all things considered. A week passed, and Lovey Bunny posted one final video before her channel was taken down. Not a vent was the title. Don't know why she named it that. But it was odds on that she'd make that title in an attempt to come off as mysterious and harrowing. You know those apology videos on modern day YouTube that squander and often defeat the purpose of what they're uploaded for? Compared to those, which are quite silly, hence why they're criticized, this is a new low. Made entirely to strike fear. When the video started, we were greeted by a photo of a sheet of paper, showcasing a really old sketch of Lovey Bunny's OC as if she drew it at a really young age. Topped off with a long, uncomfortable moment of silence. 
It was as dead silent as we could hear the sound of a drum fan and deep breaths coming from her. The silence was interrupted with her sudden, roaring laughter. The pounding of some object. The breaking of glass. The photo transformed into a video of her hands tearing apart the piece of paper and being crumpled up between her clenched fingers. She violently stomped on the piece of paper, and with each stomp, an animated limb of Lovey Bunny's OC popped up. The more stomps she put in, the more limbs connected together, eventually forming a transparent gif of Lovey Bunny shivering while tugging on her ears. This gif would duplicate itself all over the screen until the video of her stomping was unseeable. All of the lovey bunnies rip off their ears from the fierce tugging and the view slowly fades to black and white. Cut to a very fast slideshow of every bit of art she's ever done. Some of them being her unblurred NSFW artwork defaced with swears, insults, and even slurs. The audio sounded like she grabbed a soundbite of people screaming in hellfire and mixed it with her screaming bloody murder over her mic. For the entire slideshow, she was desperately, and I mean desperately, trying to make the viewers pity her. She didn't even try to defend herself, not that I'd want her to anyway. In the background, whilst she was talking, I could make out Tegan sobbing out loud. I stare at my mirror every goddamn day and contemplate putting a nail file in my throat! I project my depression on others like a fucking typhoon! And I can't even go one day without people telling me to do dirt! I hate you all! I hate myself! I hate my art! I hate everything I stick for! I hate my disgusting, arrogant parents! I hate living! I hate my life! I wanna pump my brain full of lead! I wanna die so fucking badly! It's not like I can with the little girl sleeping near me all the time! You think anyone would want to come to my funeral? I wouldn't look pretty in my coffin anyway! The slideshow stopped on an animation of her OC, pulling on her eyelids while shrieking to the heavens above. Maggots crawled out of her sockets and infested her body second by second her fur getting oilier and more unkempt. The audio was composed of her smashing her keyboard while howling at the top of her lungs. And I swear to God, no exaggeration, I heard Tegan cry out for her to stop. Literally one second before the non-vent finished. As expected, people in the comments knew what she was pulling, and didn't feel bad for her in the slightest. In fact, very rarely did I come across a comment telling her to off herself. Most, if not all of them, were users calling her an irredeemable monster. Call me crazy all you want, but I wouldn't care if she died. I'd have the biggest smile on my face. One less wretched pedophile off of this horrible planet, let alone one that had the audacity to try making us feel bad. Especially after this incident. As for how I currently feel, I'm terrified. Because of her attempt to speak with us again, thinking we would somehow forget. 
That makes it clear enough that she's alive and free. Still roaming this earth with barely any consequences. That leaves me asking myself a question I never wanted to bubble up. And I know for a fact that the answer would make me snap if I ever heard it. What happened to Tegan?